One minute countdown. I better silence my phone too. Mine will be the first one that rings. There you go. <laughs> Surviving. It's crazy. <laughs> well, it's. All right, I have four thirty, so let's go ahead and call this meeting of the Roswell General Services. Committee to order. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Councillor Foster? Here. Councillor Moore? Here. Councillor Best? Here. And Councillor Pesa is absent. Mr. Cherry Hogue, quorum. All right, thanks. All right. Um, did I get a motion to consider approval of the minutes from the July 28th, 2020 meeting? And motion to for the approval of the agenda okay I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the agenda and the approval of the minutes uh, the agenda was from when July 28 July 28th 2020 thank you and the agenda I did a second that. I have a motion and a second any discussion and all in favor signify by saying aye. aye 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 all opposed same sign it passes all right, so the first action item we have is discussion of the, consider approval of the resolution 20XX museum admission rates. And I see we have Caroline with us. How's it going, yeah. Miss Brooks? I just start off with sincere apology at missing last month's meeting. I had the wrong date written down. Me too. So I'm glad I'm here today. <laughs> Not a problem. We, uh, we actually ran real tight with that meeting, and so it was kind of a blessing that we didn't have it, and it wasn't like you were going to be opening up real quick, so right. we had time to put right, it right, off. Right. So we appreciate it. Good. So you've had a month to think about. Uh, possible museum admission rates and I gave a little bit of background we've been open for nearly 83 years we've always been free but I will say that um, even with our uh, current strategic plan which was um, put together in 2017 it was part of the plan to evaluate increasing revenues so looking at our museum store how can it can increase you know revenue there um, but also with memberships and admission rates so it's been kind of a part of the conversation for a number of years um, and with the economic downturn, it just seems like this is probably a good time to be deepening that conversation as we've been talking about how the museum can increase its uh, support of its own budget and operations uh, on an annual basis. So um, before you, you have some proposed rates, these were approved already through our Museum Board of Trustees in July. And uh, it's, it's a place to start. We're certainly open to your opinions and conversation about the rates. But what we did is we looked at a comparison of other museums around the state, and I've included some of those uh, in your packet, and there's a few on the screen as well. A few of the museums that stood out for us that were somewhat comparable in, in content and kind of quality of programming were the Harwood Museum in Taos, the New Mexico Museum of, Al of Art in Santa Fe, uh, and also the Albuquerque Museum in um, Albuquerque. And the rates do vary a bit. Uh, with the Albuquerque Museum, I believe it's $6. The Harwood is 10 The Museum of Art is 12 And that has gone up. Um, I think they used to be 8 They've gone up over the years. Uh, another museum to look at, too, is the O'Keeffe Museum. And I think they're $13. And I highlighted for you some of the um, the exemptions that they offer and that inspired us and some of the uh, ideas that we carried forward with as well because we want to make still ensure that the museum is going to be accessible um, and so with that we are offering that uh, the second Tuesday of every month that Roswell residents would get in for free um, that every Wednesday of the week uh, seniors age 60 plus would get in for free 
UZM members would always be free, those with a NARM-related membership. So if you're unfamiliar with that, that's at our, at our current $100 level, or enthusiast level membership, you get the NARM benefit, and that's the North American Reciprocal Museum Association, which offers free admission and or um, store discounts at over 1,000 museums in North America. Some of those including the ones that I listed off, so like the O'Keeffe Museum, the Albuquerque Museum, some of the state museums, they're a part of that. So if you get our $100 level membership, um, of course, in our membership program, you're going to get in to see us for free, but you can also get free admission at some of these other institutions as well. Um, in addition, let me go back to the screen. So we really felt it was important that children would be free, so whether they come for a field trip or if they're coming with their parents. Um, I, I want to continue on developing our programming for families, for children at the museum. I feel like... Um, on a personal level, like when I go there, it's kind of mostly an adult audience is what we're sort of geared for. We always try to add interactives within the exhibitions, but it's something we need to continue to improve and work towards. Uh, that being said, um, looking at art at any age is valuable and important, and so um, we feel that children should have access, you know, beyond you know all others, you know, for free to the museum. Um, in addition, when school groups come, that carries over with the children getting in for free, that their chaperones would get in for free as well. And then um, I mentioned the other two already. And I put a clause in there, and Juan and, and Joe and I have talked about this. Um, once we do have some form of mission rates approved, we'll develop a policy around it and how we'll implement those rates at the museum. For the most part, this is what we would follow, you know, however you stipulate it. But there's going to be times in which we're going to want to do exemptions. So if we're offering a family art night, and so we want to encourage families you know, of all levels to come to the museum, to experience the art, we're offering programming, we want to not stop them at the store and say, hey, you know, give us 20 bucks to cover your two parents. So there's going to be opportunities, I feel, that in, in line with our, our mission, within line with the city's values, that there'll be times in which we won't want to charge admission. That being said, as opportunities arise, we will want to seek uh, sponsors to help cover those. So even on our, our free Wednesdays or our free you know, second Saturday of the month, we would want to say, okay, this is sponsored by you know, Wells Fargo or something like that. Um, it's gonna be something that we're gonna have to develop over time. I don't know that we're always gonna be able to cover that. Therefore, you know, again, I want to just emphasize that there's gonna be situations where we'll want to have some sort of exemption. Um, another example is I, I would wanna support um, community service groups. So Tabosa often comes through the museum. It's part of the therapy for the adults and children and part of that program. And so I wouldn't want to charge them, in my opinion. Um, and there's gonna be other groups like that, Girl Scouts, that kind of thing. So that's kind of an overview. Um, I don't know what questions you have. And again, we're very open to conversation about this. Um, if you're you know, ready tonight to move forward, great. <clears throat> Obviously, if it's something that you wish to table and think more on, you have more questions you want me to follow up on, feel free to, to ask those as well. All right. I was so ready just to say um, no, because I'm still just, well, you know, something, can we just have something free? But listening to you and you know, worrying about the kids, and I see there's some kind of leeway, and I, and I appreciate that, but I still, you know, I'm still in the vein that I think, you know, everything else is charged, you know, with some, in economy, you know, you say art's important, you know, mm -hmm. and some people can't pay for it. I know people that said they come from all, come and visit, that's the only place they go, because they free, everybody don't have nothing. And we know we're in a bad economic time right now, so is this the time that's very, you know, to raise it? So, I, um, and I like that you thought it through and we've thought it through, y'all thought it through and compared and all that. I still just don't know if that's where I am right now, mm -hmm. but you did kind of, you know, make some valid points that may make it, may sway me in the other way, but I just, I don't know. I just, I just want, want something. Can we go to something free and all as well? And, and again, that's a, what you're saying is very valuable as well. And it's, it's a question. You know, there's value to us um, offering admissions. There's values to us not. being free. There's pros and cons in both scenarios. I will say that um, we, um, as a museum group, want to increase our membership base right now. And, and you've talked about this before. It's, I think it's around 362. We would love that to double, to triple, you know, more than that. 
Um, when you offer, when you have admissions, it promotes your membership as well because that's one of the primary benefits of membership. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we're able to say, oh, it's whatever the price is, ten dollars to get in, or you know, if you plan on coming to visit more than once or twice, it's probably beneficial for you to get a membership. We're going to be able to sell those men memberships at a much so more frequent what, level. So what are you doing for to increase the membership at this point? Uh, currently, so we're starting a campaign. We have a working group um, that includes board of trustees, staff, and other community members. So we're in the discussion phase right now, but we've been meeting periodically and um, I kind of aiming to start like a campaign that's really driven, driven by publicity in October. But um, just, you know, it's, again, it's whether we charge admissions, it's up to you, it's up to the full council. But um, like I said, there's pros and cons to charging admission, to not charging admission. But for instance, um, if we're charging admission, our $100 level membership, we could then add a benefit. Maybe they get four guest passes along with their membership to bring in friends. Um, so again, it just kind of adds to the value. Another thought too is, um, so you come into the museum. I feel our, our programming, you know, has a certain quality. Uh, you know, we have a great collection. Right now, you get in for free. If if you put a value on coming into the museum, it maybe places more value on that experience too. So right now, you don't pay anything for it, but all of a sudden, it costs however much ten dollars. There's a value to coming in. Um, so it might increase the enjoyment of one's experience to a certain degree. I mean, it's a different perspective. But um, again, very valid. And what about the store? Uh, what's the progress? Um, you know, you said we're talking about bringing some more money doing that way. What's, That's the what's goal. What's the process, mm -hmm. the progress on mm -hmm. that? So the idea is to spend less, uh, which is kind of a different topic, but to spend less on wholesale, let's say, and um, focus more on supporting local and regional artists and to do things more on a consignment basis. So you can almost compare it more to like a, a gallery instead of just like a regular store. Um, so we would do periodic openings and promotions of the artists that are included in, 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 in the store. Uh, and we've also you know, talked about eventually moving the store to the front. Joe and I are still conversing about that. There might be a way to do it on a, a more cost-effective temporary basis just so we can make that action happen and have the store stand out more. Um, and that's another point too. It's it's always like in the backgrounds and the abstract um, or the resolution we had talked about uh, that we were going to wait till after the renovation that we were going to do to move the store mm -hmm. to then charge admissions because the placement of the store currently is kind of awkward based on if you if let's say we charge admission someone comes to the front door they're like well I'm going just going to the store but they have to walk through exhibits to get to the store again it's kind of funny but. Um, we're doing our best, especially while we're closed or um, you know, partially closed, that we will um, kind of start working on some of those initiatives, whether it's uh, a full renovation or in this case, probably just a partial. So when are they opening the museum back up? Well, we, we don't really have a hard date yet mm -hmm. because it's, it's still one of those things that the governor has shut down oh. as far as mm -hmm. its museums, exhibitions, and theaters. But it's it's been an ongoing conversation uh, with Joe. Joe would like to see us open, um, kind of on our own terms, and oh, of course open safely. But we could do it by appointment. So we're actually thinking about that for September. But still in conversation. All right. Thank you, okay. Councillor Best. I have a few questions. Um, the North American Museum Association. Mm -hmm. Do you pay a due to that? We do. It's I believe one hundred fifty dollars a year. So it's not very much. No, mm -hmm. no, okay. Um, and I think these baby steps are perfect. Okay. Um, I think you've, you've, by looking at the age groups and stuff, I'd rather go down to the age of 12, but I'm not gonna die on a cross for that one. So I think it's, I think it's wonderful, and I think it's showing that you're proactive. I love the idea of moving the store forward. I just, mm -hmm. you gotta go through it, or you gotta go out through it to get to where you're going, and mm -hmm. just, it's, Awkward. No, it's, oh. it, you know, if you have it up front, it's not awkward because it's salesmanship is what it is. Um, I'd like a little better definition of financial hardship for organizations with a little, you know, because Tobosa, they get money from the state to mm -hmm. take these folks places. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they can do an annual membership for every 10 people, they have $100 or something like that annually. Mm -hmm. And that way, we still get a little something because they've got wear and tear on it, you know. 
mm -hmm. on the carpet and everything else, the lights, the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. and I may be anal, but to me, it's business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's that way. Um, the only other question I had is over on your memberships. When I read this, I don't understand, and I don't know if you you. Um, it says current active memberships, 362. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mm -hmm. easy enough, but it says current active members, 607. I, I'm a little mixed up there. I think those numbers, should they be flipped or? Mm -mm. So um, number of members, so it's like 362 memberships and uh, a membership can consist of a family. So it could just be two adults in a household. It could be two additional children in the household. So however many people are recognized by that membership um, is what that 600, um, figure okay, so represents. it's an average of two, two, two and a half people per membership. It depends. Something like that. One of our largest levels is, sen is seniors, and okay. then there's also some individuals as well. I think we have like 130 seniors that are members, and so those are just one individual. Okay, I get it now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And um, and I actually only received one call on this, and it was an art local artist and. Um, he wasn't very happy with the $10 fee because he was like, you know, at Sunday after church, I like to go through, walk through. And I said, well, are you currently a member? Mm -hmm. Well, no. And I said, well, look, you're an artist. You, you, um, for $100, you can walk through as many times as you want to. And I said, um, so I said, it's not that big a deal. And, and yeah. if anybody holds value in art, you should. Yeah. You're an artist. And so um, still didn't totally shut him up but he uh, but he understood but I right now unfortunately we're closed but we have a wood exhibit wood sculpture exhibit that it's worth ten dollars just to go look mm -hmm. at it, it it's beautiful and so um, that's one of those things and I thought it was interesting that we had the wood um, the wood sculpture museum but if you walk through there and you see that I I think it hadn't been out since the 1950s or something or 70s. Mm -hmm. in the 70s mm -hmm. it had, hadn't seen the light of well not the light of day, but the light of actual uh, being exhibited since the 70s. And it's absolutely awesome to go look at. And it's worth $10 just looking mm -hmm. at one of the pieces that's out. So um, I'm excited about it. And, and I, too, was one of those that wanted it free. But, but there is something that you put value on if there's a price to go in. And then, then we do have the free Saturdays. So then that also allows for... Uh, I actually think we'll increase our, our people will come through on those Saturdays and then come back when the, when they have to pay because they enjoyed it so much mm -hmm. because there is some value to it and um, it was one of those that I drug my feet and drug my feet until I realized that there is value in it so it's worth it yes Councilor so so just a quick question on our marketing to the folks the mm -hmm. Saturdays the discounts and stuff mm -hmm. have you teamed up with our group yet or are you still kind of flying out there by yourself are you with what with well, the public with, affairs yes uh i mean to a certain degree because i know you like yeah. to fly by yourself but but to not get in with roswell uh -huh. on your social media we're going to have to put it out there and i know you yeah. know i don't know if you like the r or not but it is a multi-million dollar marketing scheme mm -hmm. which in turn to me goes to this other museum corporation or, or club that you belong to or whatever oh the NARM yeah thank mm -hmm. you I mean they would be pretty impressed to have our R up there with the Roswell Museum and Art Center because it is a nationally known product so I think I think it'd be wise to mix together with Juanita and all them and Mm -hmm. and we, we do to a certain I mean degree. I get your postcard in my in my box and all yeah, that and yeah. I enjoy that yeah but you know it, and I'm sure that goes out to all the folks there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's get together with these guys and that. And if it goes to all these folks, just guess what? They might come down and see some aliens. So, and I know you don't want to mix it, but we've been blessed with it and we need to utilize it. So, right. Thank you. I kind of agree with, um, you know, that's very seldom that I would agree with Mr. Dean, but no, just kidding. But she's the age group. Is there a way could we think about making that? I'm, I'm agreeing with her maybe 12 and start charging that. Oh, so start charging at a lower age. Um, the one reason we chose 16 and up uh, to start charging, it, it follows with our um, planetarium ages. Oh, so okay. adults are 16 and up and then children are 15 and, and lower. So we're kind of in keeping with that. And I actually, now that I'm thinking, I can't think of how that, I'm not sure how it reflects um, 
admissions over at the pool. I don't know if that's a 16 and up thing. Would you happen to know, Juan? Oh, Juan, he's not right there. Okay. But Marcus is in there. Marcus is in there. Okay. And where did the ten the ten dollar was just something y'all ran when y'all just wow. did an average or where did that number come from? A little bit of a random. So I was looking at those comparisons of the other museums and um, looking at the the Harwood Museum of Art in Santa Fe and the O'Keefe and it was the lower of the three. I feel in some ways we're kind of similar to Harwood. They're operated by the University of New Mexico, but they're up in Taos. So a little bit further away, the size of the institution is somewhat similar to ours. They have Mexico modernism in their collection. So just kind of Square sort of the value of the experience I placed on the Harwood, I was kind of translating over to our museum. And not but again, open to conversation about that. I'm sorry. So a not square footage, y'all didn't buy square footage, kind of what y'all had, what we had in each spot? Yeah, the, uh, but I, I don't know. There probably is some math that we could do. There's 22,000 square feet of exhibition space. So somewhere in that. All right, okay, we can leave the eight. And it, and it was also a little bit based on, I will say, um, conversing with Joe as well. Uh, he was looking at kind of averages and what goals he sort of had set for us in terms of um, meeting our operational cost needs. Uh, and so $10 was a figure we had spoke, spoken about a number of times. But again, open a conversation. So do you think with our classes, our clay classes, our painting classes, we have adult classes, am I right? A adult and children. Most of the children's classes are in the form of camps at this point, okay. but we're conversing about that as well. So can we not charge, not saying each adult wants a membership? but can we not charge a fee? I know we're charging a fee for all of the stuff they use, mm -hmm. but we're not charging for electricity in the kiln, stuff like, can we charge a $25 add, add on to it? We used to, and then we ended up at just incorporating it into the rate overall, the, the 130 that we charge for non-members and the 105 we charge for members. But it is a question whether we can bump up that overall fee for ceramic students. You know, maybe bump it up and give them three passes a year. Oh. I mean, some, something like that, or, mm -hmm. you know, a 25% off in the store, something like that to kind of help us pay for all of the stuff that we're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as you notice, that is our most popular class and, and I get it. most expensive to run and support, it. too. Yeah, <laughs> I get it's it. great. Yeah. <laughs> I like well. it. I like <laughs> it play, playing with play. Well, and part of the thing is, is we end up competing with the, the adult center play part, and it's really mm -hmm. not the competition. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's but a whole different. But you can hands. Well, it's a different classification and a different type of. Different type from, of clay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't have a kiln. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So. Oh, they, they do, but... Do they have a kill? It's low fire. Okay, yeah. we'll yeah. see. <laughs> you got to pay for what you do, man. So. Sorry. All right. Well, maybe that's an idea to increase that price a little bit, too, so that... Yeah, it's something we've talked about. We there. increased the ceramics fees maybe five, six years ago, something like that, but it, it is one of the higher cost items that we support, so it, it might be time to relook at that. At the same time, it's always trying to strike a balance. A majority of the adult students that take those classes are at the senior level, and they already have memberships, so they're already supporting the museum in other ways. Um, and, but you, don't, like, you have to be careful how far you push what people can afford to pay, and, and again, striking that balance, but it's something to examine for sure. Or do we? Can we make a motion? I, can I get a motion? Okay, I'd like to make a motion to send to. Are we doing full council? Or are we doing consent? Consent. Consent. Okay, I'd like to send to the consent consent agenda on our next city council, uh, which is sep uh, September what? Do we have a clue? September 9th. Or September. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's start over. So I'd like to send a motion to full council, or um, to consent agenda on the full council on September 10th. Um, the museum rates, resolution 20-XX. Is that good enough for you? That works. Okay. I have a motion, and I'll give it a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. All right, it passes and goes to 
full council. Thank you. All right, thank you. All and again, right. if you have any follow-up questions about the topics that were brought up today, feel free to call me or come by or something, so. Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you, appreciate Bye. your time. All right, now we move on to the non-action review of discussion master of the old municipal, the OMA. 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 That sounds. Never heard of that before. Okay. Uh, and, and the genesis for this is a couple of things. First off, we've recently uh, received the contracts for the two capital outlay pro projects that we were awarded money for during the last session. So $850,000 for the development of two new baseball fields in the Sierra Grande, uh, $1.45 million for uh, a development of an all-inclusive park also to be located within Sierra Grande. And in order to really start the development of this, uh, these projects, we really need a master plan that shows us where these things are going to go formally. And so, and so we can't do any design work. We can't do anything until we say, this is where this thing's going. And it's time for those. Also, I'm looking for, uh, eventually, I'll be taking all this to the city council for a f formal approval. Uh, looking for a master plan approval for the entire uh, OMA area. I've been, you've been listening to this thing for four years now and never been able to really get it to the city council, but we've been doing stuff that's around it, involved within it, running water and sewer lines and trying to acquire properties and other stuff. And so we were going to take this to city council for an approval of the concept plan so we can start to work on the pieces over time. Uh, as you all recall, uh, there's four quadrants up in the northeast side. You got the northwest or the southwest. You got the plaza area that's in the northwest. And then finally, let me go over these real fast. Single family development. Uh, you can see the existing uses that are there Game and Fish, Noon Up, uh, the, the American Legion, the Elks, and uh, the Joy Center. Now, the southwest side is probably the easiest to develop, start developing soon. Uh, it's single family, uh, two different kinds of development uh, densities. The, the bigger lots are to the south from half to one acre, and then the other ones up uh, between uh, Boeing Boulevard and what would be college, a quarter to half. The plaza area again. But the one that we're really going to focus in on is Sierra Grande. Uh, the areas that we're talking about is the development of two ball fields located in that strip that you see there. You've got the soccer fields. You've got the, the uh, amphitheater. Bill, can I interrupt? When we say two ball fields, we're talking about two, two, two clover leaves. Two yes, clover two, two quads. Okay. Yeah, two quads. Okay. And we're talking about putting uh, the uh, all-inclusive park located off on just to the, uh, the side there to the south of the recreation facility. Now this is what, what these things would look like, the orientation. And we're talking about basically using out of that $850,000, we want to be able to secure money uh, for a master plan development for the entire Sierra Grande, and more importantly, engineering plans, because we need to run utilities over this stuff we need to know what's out there and then get real construction plans in terms of the, the civil plans to support that stuff. The other is to, to build a, a main spine road, one of the main spine roads that would go from college and come out on Montana because it provides access to these ball fields and also will go by the all-inclusive park so you could do a couple of different things with the same facility. So that's the intent there. Now. Mm -hmm. As we stated last year when all this happened, this is the intent here is really to start to create a tournament quality place, a unified baseball field in Sierra Grande, not eliminating the other ones. Those become the practice fields, the Lions Hondo and Noonop, but these would be tournament fields. Um, let's see what I got. Okay, over here. The all-inclusive park. We saw this last year at the ICIP. 
uh, hearings kind of down originally we were looking down at uh, uh, closer to Montana and creating that other road that would connect to the parking lot and also that road would actually continue on to college uh, these are the components that we presented last year you'll notice an entry feature this is the one that Kiwanis wants to build or has proposed to build um, kind of looks it just I just threw something together but the idea is to, to look like game and fish they want a gate uh, we have a uh, all-inclusive park we're looking at a dancing fountain park um, special needs kids don't like water being dumped on top of them so these dancing jets provide you know some water skill or water uh, interaction opportunities the sensory stuff that we've talked about um, the, the parabolic mirrors that you can talk to each other 100 feet away um, and also picnic shelters to, to make it a place where people can go with a family and kind of hang out we see but we kind of messed around with it and, and we thought well what if we shifted it up and there was some thought that maybe it was too far away from the, the recreation facility so what we're proposing here is sliding it north so we can attach it to this existing parking lot which is nice because now I don't have to build another parking lot with lights save money that can be put directly back into the facility and it's still separated from all the activity but closer and there's the idea here is that you can use you can multi multitask multifunction on that same existing uh, parking lot which is rarely used to its capacity right now so this would offer a chance to really double up all the same components sensory parks so you see the the picnic areas and the buffers uh, so that is our intent uh, to for the location we th I think Qantas has agreed to that one um, and so what we're going to do is is bore you guys to death um, this is the schedule on presenting we're obviously here tonight finance public safety legal infrastructure and then take the concept plan to full city council for with a resolution uh, in October and so then in the meantime we'll also be preparing RFPs for design services for both the park and the ball fields and you know getting the civils in place and so uh, the idea is that on the 8th we get everything taken care of and then let the guys let him go and go nuts so and I stand for any questions I have a question. Um, the, will you put the picture back up of where you're talking about moving the, the, the all inclusive park? Because the this purpose one? of all inclusive park is not to be, the, if they have sensory issues, why do you want to be where next to the ball pill where everybody's screaming and all? I mean, I'm, so I want to see where you, mm -hmm. what's, okay, so this is in the corner of the main, is that, what's the, Montana's one way and what's that other one? Hold on, let me, let me go back to, give you a big picture yeah here. there's no ball fields around it there's no ball yeah there's no ball Not, fields so he moved it down right? yeah so that's where it was yeah. at first by the ball yeah. field and then you moved it down is that where you moved it up? yes no, you just moved it up towards where that so they could black, utilize a parking lot the parking lot well, you said, just, but if there's with the, with the the it's artistic be there. that they're oh. talking about using it for if the park it's not my turn but if you park. notice if you go back to the park. next one bill no other way oh other way where you've got it nestled up to the parking if oh, you this notice one, get, uh, get this right here. if you notice the entry is by the s it's completely away from the parking lot the little square by the s in the white is where the entry will be so they're bringing it away from the parking and your ball fields are on the other side of the road where there's going to be plenty of landscaping and there's going to be a buffer all the way around that park is that mm -hmm. what you're saying for the noise and the sound and the landscaping and such oh, yes. yeah that's, that's what i mean we can't make it perfectly quiet over there but it, uh, it's it's still a better spot it's still isolated and yet attached to the recreation so they're not completely like out in their own field are y'all still working with the people that came and brought i in? think so is that who the kind of who that the people that came and i think they're doing the it? equipment We've had some meetings with Kiwanis and other people. Uh, well, it wasn't, was it the Kiwanis, I think? I think it was Kiwanis, right? Yes. So the trail system, there's a, there's a trail there also. So you see you the need road. to get closer to the mic. Yeah, we can. You see, see the road that he's got there. But we actually turned it a little bit so it's, it runs 
perpendicular there with the parking lot. So it's, we've turned it, and there's a trail there. So you have the road, the trail, and when we put the, the uh, picnic shelters in there, we're going to hump up the dirt and with plantings in the, in the dirt and the shelters and all that. It's going to buffer the noise. Like a and, berm. Yeah, like a berm. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a berm all the way around it, basically. And uh, right now we're looking at hoping, hoping, keep your fingers crossed, trying to write some grants. <laughs> How about that? And like that uh, one of the ideas we kind of talked about is to have a trail all the way around it. So the, the families are inside, brother, sister, and whoever's inside the, uh, the park playing, and it's double gated, has restrooms and all that. But the caregivers can actually go around the outside. And if you have trees and plantings and a, and a, and a trail and a bench, now I can relax for a minute and watch the children or whoever, but they're having fun. So now I'm, I've, I've kind of stepped out and I can relax myself. So that was some of the things that were kicked around it. It's hard to show on a, a drawing like this. Right. So to your point, uh, yes, ma'am, uh, we've looked at the sound and we're gonna put a berm around it. I don't know what that is. Okay. A berm? A berm. Yeah. berm. It's like a big speed oh, hump, okay. but it's taller than you. Oh, okay. And then you've got trees yeah. and vegetation on top and around and all over it. It'll probably have a sprinkler system. Yeah, so irrigation. That lot, is that parking lot already paved? The one yes. That yes. See it, yeah. It's already there. Yes. It's there for the for the. Uh huh. Is that the one they center. put it's up the for the last the Gus gridiron or whatever the one they had yes. finished no, paving and all that stuff? Yes. This one's for the aquatic center. This one's only for the aquatic. It's the back one. Yeah, it's the extra, side. extra for the aquatic. The top of the picture is the mm -hmm. you can yes, see the. Oh, I see the water. Okay, I see. Okay. It's really an overflow for the. Right. Uh, yeah, the this, right center. now, really, the overflow, uh, right now, it's where you see those cars right next to the pool. Up, oh, these yeah. little cars there, mm -hmm. they're pulled in. That's where people go down the sidewalk and actually go to the aquatic. This is actually sitting off by itself, the road that goes through and out. So you have the, the little islands there. So it's pretty much sitting there by itself and is lit. And uh, it's going to be a good place. It's really going to be a good place. So how much are you saving by not having to build a parking lot? I don't know, but that, you know, no idea. <laughs> I'd rather buy a playground a equipment one. than asphalt. Yeah, that's you know? what I'm saying. That's, that's you know? what I'm that's <laughs> what I was wondering. How much more money do you have now? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, a, that's a better use of uh, our funds. Okay. All right. Cool. And with uh, one thing with the dancing fountain, uh, the bathroom, we want to make sure that it's big mm -hmm. enough to accommodate people. They've been able to change and, you know, accommodate the people. They're, it gets locked at night open in the morning for security by these folks so I have one quick question this doesn't have to do with that the joy center is it sitting on our property or county that's our property but it's a county building it's a county building thank you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a late. That's a later thought. Like, all right. But let me well, cool. confirm. Just making sure. I'll let you all three know for sure. That's but I'm pretty sure it's ours. I can look real quick. But you got your realtor. Well, I got Sir, how, Onyx I'm, maps. Sorry. How long do we think from process to process about this all? Include we talking two years, five years? This is actually without the parking lot, having to deal with the parking lot. Can be the, it, it, it's going to be accelerated. It's uh, it can probably be done in a year and a half. But it's nice because it's also expandable. If there's but a need for build. additional space, you got room to the south mm -hmm. and yeah. all around it. So it's That's really cool. cool. Jim, Jim right. just like said behind us maybe January groundbreaking. That's yeah, Chavez. Yeah. It, cool. It's Chavez. Okay. Yeah, we 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 have to put. We we uh, work with their uh, when they have the carnivals that come in. We, but it's still it is Chavez County. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you much. All right. This one I put on the, yeah. the agenda. Um, it's one of those things that I'm at a point where. Is that the same one, Chisholm? Is that where we start yes. talking? Okay. Is actually Chisholm, but uh, the the city acquired this property in 2007 to build a park, and I do believe it's 2020, 13 years later, and we haven't done anything to the property. 
that means nothing except we mow it every every once in a while when the weeds get too bad. Um, so, and one of the things that, that this doesn't show is when you expand it out to the triangle area, these kids have no park whatsoever they can get to except for the closest is Carpenter, which is across a five lane highway. And so one of the concepts I have, and I've talked to, when I first brought it up to Mr. Burris, and I hate to put, he's, he's on the spot now, but uh, I hate to tell him because he said we need no more parks in this town until I showed him this, and he told me we need one more park in this town. And, um, and so I think that it's, I know times are tough and times are tight, but I still say we've got to get to a point where we, this is our property and we need to take care of it one way or another. And we might as well start by just getting grass on it and, and an irrigation system in it and then eventually develop it into a park or we need to get rid of the property. It's not something that we, we shouldn't acquire land and then for a purpose and then not follow up on the purpose. So my question to you is, where are the where's the money going to come from do you already have it allocated in a line item for this facility and do you already have the money for the continual maintenance do i have money acquired do i don't have the authority to have money acquired from the it so takes a full city want, council you want to grasp this and put irrigation system in it which i'm sure the irrigation system is going to run Twelve, thirteen thousand dollars, if not more. I have Mr. No Burris can answer that. Uh, uh, microphone. Thank uh, you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sharon I'm old. Call. I can't hear you. Sharon Call should have gone home. Anyhow, <laughs> we had engineering go out there and we kind of looked at elevations to make sure if we did put a park in there, we're not going to flood anybody's house, right? Uh, we probably have to remove uh, four to six inches of dirt uh, to get rid of the rock and gravel and some rubble and stuff. But there is uh, water there, sewer, obviously, because there used to be a school. So something like that irrigation system, I don't know how much it costs for dirt. I could probably acquire some from landfill. Um, you know, we just don't have a lot of people to do the work, but we could help. Um, irrigation is going to be between forty-five and 60000 that's for the, the box and then the valves, everything to run it. Um, and of course, and then we'd want to, you know, put in grass and so on. But that's where you gotta start with infrastructure. So there is water. So irrigation, that's a plus. That's a plus. irrigation is, is 45 to 60. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Depending on how you, far you go. <laughs> have, have you gone to the county and asked them to play the game too? Uh, yeah, right. Have you had the opportunity to go? I mean, they keep saying they're going to play with this, so this is not, their side. Not on this issue. I, the last time I tried was on the Carpenter Park issue, and they're trying to trade land for, for a piece of property that's not worth anything. Um, so, um, My whole thing is that the fact is the city acquired land. We sat on it for 13 years. Um, it's, it seems to be our MO. We, we, we sit on something. We sat on the girls' softball field uh, development for, well, since ni from 92 to 2013 until we got it done. Um, and so my whole thing is, yes, we need to, uh, we either need to put up or we need to get, sell the land. But my other thing is, at some point, we are, when you look at the citywide, Joe did a survey, and we should have another park somewhere around Roswell High. We don't own land by Roswell High. And, and that's when you start looking at case by case and by parts of town, we have more parks on the north side of town. And if you start getting to that point, then, then we start looking at possible lawsuits against us. I, I, I think I agree that we need a park on that side of town. I totally agree. I don't know if I want, you want that whole piece to be a park, maybe some basketball or something, and, and then the park area. But I just, 
I, I, I don't agree about just sitting there. I have an issue with it sitting there all of these years. We spent the money to buy, we spent the money to tear it down. We spent, so I just, you know, and me growing up in that area, you know, the school was there, so we had somewhere to play. Um, and the, the, we don't have, the backyards are small over there, so there's nobody with any large, you know, playground equipment in the back or anything like that. There are a lot of kids around there, a lot, a lot of kids around there um, that walk to pay kids or, you know, go to, you know, but there's still, I, I agree that we need to do something. I don't know how quickly we need to do it, but I agree that we need to do something. I, you know, I'm not seeing that happen really fast because of the economy right now, but I, I think we probably could look in, you know, I think we should look into seeing how feasible it is. You know, I don't, like I said, we don't know where the money is coming from. We know we're short and all kinds. We know that's going to be easy. So this may not be the time to, you know, to do well, talk about it. But I think it's, I agree it's necessary. And I agree that should, you know, that that area needs a park because we don't have, the next park we have is Martin Luther King Park that's way on the other side. And then the Carpenter park. park that's on the other, that's across the highway. Um, but then Martin Luther King Park to me is not really a park. That's a school playground. That's they just threw a name on it, but um, it's still part of the school, so that makes sense because those kids uh, in that area use it. Right. So, you know. So well, it's fenced know. off. They don't. They, I mean, and it is separate from the. But but yes, it, it is. This school does use it, but we do have a good walking track, and there's yeah, a lot there's of people lot of, that I agree use there's it. There's things there, and a lot of people use it. And I, no, I'm just saying the distance. So yeah. the south side, you know, the piece of park that they have out at the base, the two pieces of park. That they have out at the base, this outside one. The grass is beautiful. Who takes care of the grass? You take care of the grass out? The grass is beautiful out there. There's nothing out there but grass and one bench. So we can't call that a park. Um, the other one, I, I the one that, that rushers one, the one that they but they destroy that one. They don't take care of that one. The lights out there, they're throwing rocks into the basketball courts and I, and I can't I, it's just a mess. But, um, so I think those kids deserve you know, I think they deserve something. I just don't know. You know, I just don't think financially they're going to be able to say they're going to. They're not going to try to find the money. Well, to, and at this point, I say we can find the money. We have a, um, we have a half a million dollars coming from uh, the sales tax that just got doubled to a million dollars. So if we're saying forty-five thousand to sixty thousand dollars for to get grass on this, I think that we can pull it from from that, but. Um, my my other insistence is that the fact is that w we keep saying we don't we keep holding off and holding off we've had it for 13 years mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm at the point where it, we either stop and 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 say that we're not going to do anything for the, the kids in this area or we go ahead and do it so my next question is if we look at this property bill hello have we looked at this property for contractors and housing? What is the housing in this area? I need you to microphone. Sorry. Yeah. I can't hardly see this picture over here, so I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. We have looked at this, but it, we've put it away because we knew that there's it's undecided at this point what, what it's going to be, but it's a nice large piece of property, it has utilities, and it would be very useful for affordable housing because it is big enough to get lots of good density, which is what an affordable housing developer needs. So all the parts are there, um, and it could be used. It's, it's easy accessible for all the contractors, mm -hmm. for their sewer, the, the water, and all of that. And all of that. Okay, um, and what is the large area to the left? Well, let me cut you off on this one. I'm not, I will fight that for the longest time because there's plenty of land right there for development. And that's what I'm asking about the land over it's, to the left. It, it's all empty. And who owns it? Uh, several other people. Okay, and that, that's not saying that they want to sell it. So there we go there. No, they're, it's for sale right now. All those lots are for sale. $7,500 a lot, I do believe. Yes. Yes. 
because for the longest time there was a for sale sign on our property. Well, I'm not convinced that we need to be putting a park in at this time when we're, we cut our budget so much and we don't know what's coming down the pike with the queen up north. So I'm almost at this point, we haven't had to do furloughs. We haven't had to dismiss any employees that we, we need. We've done our buyouts and stuff. That, I think it's the wrong time to step into this. Plus, poor Jim has his hands so full with the pond that we're working on for the zoo. And then you're throwing all this other stuff on him. Um, you've already got the money for the all-inclusive park and the, the ball fields. You've already got that money, that contract done. This is just adding more to our plate that we don't need right now. And I understand one of the other counselors told me there's tons of kids over there. They walked over there for the campaign, said there's tons of kids over there. I get it. Right now, if you want to put some backstops up there and not put anything on it, we probably could go over there and drag it for rocks or whatever a lot cheaper at this time and make it a dirt field, which all of us have played on dirt fields as kids. I mean, that's the way it was back in our day. Put four backstops on it on each corner, and I don't know if we have any equipment that we could put in a small jungle gym, but not grass it, not irrigate it for now, because I don't think we have the money frivolously to be thrown away on a park at this point my opinion well and you can have it but I I'm at the point where um, we throw a lot of money away on lots of other things and throwing money away on kids is never throwing money away it's an investment and um, I at this point for the kids are having to play in the street and I I think that th it's something that we need to start looking and pushing towards and so that's one of the reasons I brought it here. I mean, obviously this is an infrastructure project and it will eventually be, probably have to go through them, but I want us to keep looking at it and not put it off on the side um, because I really see that this is a, well, as Joe had said, when he, you did the survey, we, we, needed, we needed a park somewhere near Roswell High. We don't own land that near there we own this land and that's one of the reasons why I oppose mm -hmm. getting rid of it to uh, development because there's plenty of area for a developer to already develop here and um, this would be um, perfect for a park I, I do think that they dropped a ball in 2007 because half of this was already irrigated when it was the school half of it had irrigation it still has the box there it still has you know sprinkler heads we know they probably don't work since they sat there for 13 years but you know in 2007 that was before 2008 so the the crash so i we probably had funds then that we could have done it but but i think too long that we have lo looked the other way to this neighborhood and and I think that's one of the things why, why I'm going to continue to push this. All right. And actually, it's not an action item. It's just we wanted to br bring it up. So I appreciate your input. Thank you. And at this time, do we have public participation? Or do we have... Okay. Do we have any questions for? I can't hear you, Angela. I'm sorry. Would you like Jim? The pond. The pond at the zoo. <laughs> have we hit water yet? Had streets come over, kind of level some things off. Right now, uh, we're getting bids for irrigation. Same thing. Uh, working on some grass seed and working on the well. There's an old well over there, and it's been sitting for a while. So we've got Lance going over to look at it. The shaft spins, so we can tweak it a little bit so we can use the well on some of that property. So it's coming along. It's coming along. It's, the hard work's done. Now it's infrastructure, so it's, it's electricity. So we've talked to J&G, we've talked to Axel Energy about putting a pole there. 
So, you know, when you're out there with your picnic table and you plug in your crock pot, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that's kind of where we're at. We, that water you see now is ground. Pardon me? No. <laughs> so, yeah, what you see now is groundwater. So. Oh, to keep the aerated. Oh, aerated yeah, well, those are, yeah, the fountains are going to go away because people, we get, have to repair the seals all the time. The, the actual fountains that we were going to, they had out there years ago. Yeah, but we're going to fix that waterfall and we're going to put in what's air stones. So if you've been out to the bird sanctuary, places like that, you see it bubbling. That's, uh, we're working on that right now. Where to place those? We had some meetings yesterday on that. It's going to be fun. I don't know if you've seen it, but it, it all looks different now. I have a quick question. Right. Your spring that you've got down there, does it fill, does it go into that enough that we can have continuously running water into the hondo? No, it's, no. it's the spring is, it's not there anymore. Oh. It's, uh, what you see is groundwater. There's okay. a, there's an old valve there, but it's, it's leveled out. Okay. I um, thought maybe it'd be just a, that'd be sweet if it was continuously cool. flowing. Yeah, it'd be keep fun. it really fresh. Yeah, so it's, uh. And it's deep enough for trout? Working on that. Brown trout? Trout and bass, both. You know, it doesn't to be so deep, but uh, of course, game and fish is not, you know, everybody's not staffed back up, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thanks. Yes, yes. They've moved everything out there. Just real quick, Mr. Chair, uh, we do have the facilities, recreation, and the library, and of course the museum is still here in the other room if you all have any questions in regards to the reports. Uh, could Enid come and tell us how the, how the repairs are coming? Yes. is coming too um, but I'll tell you what what's happening so far so um, they put up partitions uh, to block off the children's area and the north side uh, no yeah, the north side of the library so that people can come into the library during our library hours which are currently now 10 to 2 Tuesday through Friday we hope to expand that um, but we have a senior only hour from 10 to 11 and then um, the, pu the general public between 11 and 2. They come in on the east entrance because the north entrance is blocked. Um, the crew, your crew has, has made some noise in the library. Uh, they <laughs> removed the, the tile in the bathrooms and also the, the blue, what's it called? The grout, okay, the grout. I thought it was something else. Um, they they tr were hand tools and chiseled out the grout, and they've been cleaning that out, and they we had a quiet day today because I think they finished that up. Um, and I'm not sure what the next steps are, so would you like to step on over and we'll change? May I ask, you said the east entrance, but do you mean the west entrance? Yes, okay, okay, thank you, because I didn't know we had an east entrance. In the alley. In the alley. Okay, thanks. Uh, counselors, our, uh, the contractor is mobilizing. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled for Friday to try to work out a schedule of, uh, of events of how we're going to proceed, and we'll bring back to the committee that schedule. So they're 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 get, they're preparing to get ready to get started. Cool. Facilities is just cleaning up some things and doing some things to help speed it up. So. Sure. I I've never known construction to be quiet. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good try, but sorry. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Yeah. All right. We can 
have you in it. Oh. <laughs> musical <laughs> musical chairs. <laughs> we need another okay. microphone. Um, no, that's uh, that meeting room which you're talking about on the east south corner of the building. Um, that room, the water didn't go that far. So that room is not, um, that room, there wasn't anything damaged done to that room. We did move um, furniture out of the children's area and we put, put it into the Bondurant room and we also put it, well, the Bondurant room we had, we had moved furniture out in planning to be open so that we can do some better social distancing. Um, so the children's muse, uh, furniture went into that meeting room. So it's not, we're not able to use it because it's just full of furniture right now. Um, we do have some, what? I can't understand her. The children's area, uh, part of the circulation desk near the children's area, the entrance, the lobby, uh, part of the magazine area and um, part of the Bondurant room. So from the bathrooms, it just went like that far. And, and I think we didn't have as much damage because the crew got there so quickly. They were, they were you know, cleaning up and, and getting things done. And then the crew that, um, that was doing the work, they were so very, very careful about making sure that it all dried out. And um, so I don't feel like there's any mold in, you know, that, that was left over or residued. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. So any other questions? All right, well then let's move on to public participation. No particip, okay. We don't have no public. All right, well cool, then let's go ahead and adjourn. Cool. Thank you all much. What time? Uh, Five thirty-two. Five thirty-two. That works. Rita didn't do public participation. Wow.